Hey. Hey, Facebook. Thought I'd just say hi. Guess everybody is locked in some kind of way dealing with this uh, virus thing. Hopefully, uh, it won't last too very long. I think it's gonna at least take a few weeks, maybe a month or two. Um, but I gotta think that this is for the better good, right? You look at the possibility of the math of exponential growth, and it's pretty frightening. So I think this is actually, all things considered, this is not a lot to ask for us to kind of just chill, keep our space, <laughs> stay in, take a breath. It might be good for, for the world, actually, just to take a pause, man, take a breath. Whew. Let's sit back for a little bit, man, and just... Just, just take a pause. Um, you know, I'm an optimist for those of you that know me. I think that, uh, you know, at the end, on the other side of all of this, we're going to be better for it. So, you know, I was thinking today, as uh, scary as this might be and as complicated as this might be, as inconveniencing as this might be, and as much as we like to bash some of the trappings of the modern world, like the phones and social media and all of that, Imagine this virus hitting before we had social media, before we had cell phones, before we had this massive internet. Because biology is biology, right? This could have happened at any point. It's not technology didn't make the virus happen, didn't give birth to the virus. Thank God it happened in a time post some of this technical evolution where we could, you know, get the word out fast, you know, make people aware about it fast. I mean, look at what the nation is doing now. It's pretty amazing when you think of this, you know, we're mobilizing hundreds of millions of people. The act that we can actually attempt to shut down our lives like we're doing is pretty amazing when you think about it. Just the fact that we can even try to do that. And as crazy as it is, with all the, you know, people making a rush on the grocery stores and no toilet paper and, you know, food being off the shelves. We have shelves to go to. Think about that. And, and we're not out of food as a country. We just, you know, we just hit the supply chain hard in a couple of days or so, in a week or so. The, the supply chains are going to make an adjustment and they, we won't even run off. We won't even run out of foods on the shelves. That's, um, that's a huge testament to how, you know, what we've been able to amass in our just couple of hundred years as a country. Pretty amazing. Pretty, pretty staggering when you think about it. So I'm going to remain optimistic that um, where, however bad it will be, it's going to be less bad than it could have been um, just because of the actions we're taking now. So hopefully everybody is being safe. Hopefully everybody is uh, just, just making adjustments and rolling kind of rolling with the punches, right? A lot of people, a lot of countries out there, believe me, just don't have the ability to even try to roll with the punches as we are doing now. So, um, actually, I didn't really have any agenda. I just thought I'd go live real quick. I hadn't done it in a while. Thought I'd say hi. I'm actually kind of thinking if I did a podcast today, um, if you're tuned in any of my podcasts, it's pretty cool. It's, a, it's basically me thinking out loud a little bit of what I can do with this month of being locked in or a couple of months, whatever it ends up being. And it's this whole idea of rebooting, you know. F5 is the keystroke on the computer screen, on a, com on a keyboard, where you reboot a computer when things go kind of crazy or get stuck or get lost or stop working. Just, hey man, just shut it off, put it back on, reboot. You know, this might be a good opportunity for us to do a reboot of sorts. And that's what I talk about today on my podcast. If you haven't tuned into that, I invite you to do it. It's just one conversation. No end game, nothing to sell, nothing to do like that. It's just a conversation, but it's fun. It's growing. I'm on my 91st, 90, episode 91 today. Wow, that's pretty amazing in itself. So tune in if you haven't. Symbol, Athletica, or just symbolpod.com and get you there. Um, anyway, I'm wondering what people are gonna do productive on this time off, during your pause, right? Hopefully you're not gonna spend all this time off mentally thinking about, you know, back how, how bad things are being back at work and all that stuff. It's gonna be there when you get back, believe me. 
So, hey, Jennifer, hey. Hey, everybody, hey. I see people are tuning in now. I'm doing all right. I'm just hanging out. <laughs> uh, stuck in my little, stuck in a bad cave. <laughs> stuck in the famous bad cave. I actually, my all my gyms have closed, right? So I, if you can see that, my uh, wheel and my water bottles, that's my new makeshift little home gym. <laughs> I can I can probably uh, be pretty punishing to myself over the next month or so with that, with just that stuff. So um, I'm not gonna let this Corona make me soft. This Rona, <laughs> I'm not gonna let it get me soft, right? Not gonna even let me get me down. So I can get out there in the road. I can walk. I can run, and I can deal with my water bottles and my 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 wheel and the floor that floor right there push-ups and burpees and mountain climbers and all that stuff that i actually hate i'll just have to make myself do it so anyway i hope that you have uh plans to find a way to turn this into a thing let it be something more than depressing you know let it be something more than you being locked in let it be some type of personal opportunity for you to you know do something right production wise read a book or listen to a book or watch videos or research something or contemplate think jeremy james my one man band hey have you been seeing what sean eiferman has been doing or where he goes live every day i think at noon and every day the proceeds of the donations go to a different local artist kind of like a way to keep live music alive and to keep the music flowing, the money flowing to live artists. I think it's pretty cool. You know, Sean's a pretty, he's a pretty good guy, man. He's a pretty mellow guy. I call him my Zen guy, right? He's always kind of mellow. And uh, he's kind of like I am. He's pretty optimistic. Um, but that's pretty cool. I've tuned into a couple of those. And every time I tune in, Jeremy, I, I think about you. you. You should tune into that and do a little concert, man. You're, uh, let the world see what you can do. Uh, man, Misty, hey, it's been forever. Jennifer, hey, how are you? Another Jennifer, a couple of Jennifers have tuned in. Everybody, I hope everybody's not going stir crazy. I'm actually just here. It's, it's just here. I'm, I don't have kids or pets or anybody running around. So, you know, if anybody should go stir crazy, it should be me. But I won't. This, I can get lost in uh, projects, right? I can, I can do things. I can uh, take advantage of this time. You know what's really funny is that, I guess it's funny, I'm gonna say funny, not sad. I'm gonna say it's funny. But when they describe what, you know, social distancing is, you know, that's not that uncommon for, <laughs> for me as a lifestyle, actually. I get out at night, because I eat out a lot. I like to eat out, I eat light. So it's easy when you eat salads and things like that. It's, you know, when you don't have to do prep or clean up or break down, it's easy to eat out a lot. So. Um, I, 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 that's my habit, and if I, so I don't really eat at home, and if I showed you my refrigerator prior to this week, you'd, you would have laughed, I should have taken a picture of it, it totally looks like a, it looks like a refrigerator in Best Buy, <laughs> nothing, there's nothing in my refrigerator normally, Renair, hey man, Renair's a great trainer here in Las Vegas, they own Power Hour 360, and uh, man, I did a couple of those calorie burn challenges, Rainier has on quite a, quite a few occasions punished me, man. He's a, he's a torturer, but in a good way. You know, his, his work is a boot camp. So I started, met you with Las Vegas boot camps, and then and I also went to your Power Hour 360, which is a huge, very cool um, place to work out. Um, but uh, hey, nice to see you, man. Hope all is well. I guess everything's shut down now. You're probably inspiring people to get out there and keep that personal discipline and do something on their own, right? Uh, I know you are. Um, I am. I'm still uh, fighting that old man off as I do most days. Joe Dyer, hey, my friend. One of my longest friends, man. One of my longest standing friends. It's funny. I met Joe on, I met Joe, gosh, 20 years ago? And we friends to this day. Joe is by far the most multitasking person I know. He makes me seem lazy. He always has eight things going on at one time and highly productive things. He's just a pretty, uh, 
pretty amazing guy. Good to see you. Sean, um, man, it's been forever. A lot of people tuning in. Hey, Marcy. I think you just moved. See, you know what's cool about social media? Is that though you don't talk to people in very long periods of time, you kind of know what's, what everybody's up to, where everybody is. It's very cool, right? Cause like, like, Marcy, I know you just moved. And we haven't spoken in ages, right? So, I mean, it's just very cool. Yeah, Joe, it's been 20 years. Plus, it's been more than 20 years. I remember um, your son was tiny, was just learning how to ride a bicycle. Now he's a grown man with a child of his own. Oh, my gosh. Good thing we're not getting old, <laughs> right? It's a good thing we stop aging. Cause this is craziness, man. Wow. Well, you know, I was thinking this coronavirus thing, you know, and I hate, you know, um, I, 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 some of the pre- I'm going to make some predictions of some, some, some areas we're going to see tremendous growth from as a result of the challenges from the coronavirus. And hopefully my mood music isn't too loud. I got my little Sono speaker in the background, keeping background music. Um, but I think we're going to see dramatic changes in distance learning. I've been a big advocate of that for 10 years now. A lot of people that know If you know things I've been involved with in the past, got involved in video streaming, wow, 15 years ago? Um, And the future of education, I think, is in um, distance learning. And you know, because I used to always make the case that why should we be punished? And I call it punished, right? Why should people be limited to who they're educated by based on where they live? That's just not fair at all. So imagine a world in which, you know, you're the greatest math teacher in the world, right? And you just have a gift. Some people just have a gift for certain things. But imagine that you're the greatest math teacher in the world and you can go on and you can, you know, at your convenience, just click a button and go live and teach people something, a course or a lesson. There's no limit to how many people you can teach like that, right? You could do a a thousand people, 10,000 people, a hundred thousand people. Now let me blow it. This is what used to always blow my mind about the economies of scale of that potential business model. So let's say you're an expert at whatever. I just like to use math because, you know, I used to suck at it, right? (laughs) But I also, growing up, realized I didn't suck at it as much as I thought that I did. Just some of my teachers sucked at it, right? Because teachers can make a difference. But imagine that you're one of the greatest math tutors in the world, and you can go on and for an hour just tutor people on a certain whatever it is, algebra, geometry, whatever that is. And um, imagine you have, a, you know, a thousand people, ten thousand people, a hundred thousand people tuning in to your, you know, that you can tutor at a time. Think about that. Now imagine that, you know, they paid you a buck, one dollar, which is cheaper than any tutor you're gonna ever get. But you're the greatest math teacher in the world, so you're worth a dollar. Now imagine that ten thousand people tuned in, a hundred thousand people tuned in for an hour. They each paid you a dollar. How much money did you make in that hour? That's the future, man. That's the that's the potential of unlimited wealth and earning potential that the modern world gives us. And when we're innovative and we find ways to leverage the things that we are great at. First of all, actually, I talked about that on my podcast today, too. I, I, it wasn't the point of my podcast, but I talked upon the incredible um, power in pursuing your passion. Um, if you tune into my podcast at all, Today's podcast, um, Human F5, I talk about that, I touch on it, but if you go back to podcast episode two, where I talk about um, the power of, um, the, the connection between power and passion, I talk about that in a very practical way. It's not like a kumbaya thing. It's not like a, hey, we should let us go to do the things we love because it sounds cool. Nah, I break it down in very practical terms and it actually ultimately ends up being about energy, power, and resources. So I invite you to tune into that if you've not, if you're not doing that. Um, it is the X Factor, Jediah. Wow, you're going way back into the archives. It is, yes sir, <laughs> it is. Um, but if you've never tuned into my podcast, they're very informal. They're unscripted and unrehearsed and most of them are just kind of free flowing thought, but it's growing really fast. Um, Symbol Athletica is kind of the brand I'm doing it under, but the shortcut URL to get to the podcast is just symbolpod.com or search Symbol Athletica on 
pretty much everything now. Apple, Google, Spotify. It's cool that I'm on Spotify, right? Because now Spotify is on TV. Even my daughter thinks it's cool that I'm a Spotify artist, right? But anyway, I talk about the tremendous power in aligning your life with your passion. Um, It's one of the things that I think to be the secret, right? The secret to massive empowerment and happiness and just completely radically changing what you are able to take from a day as opposed to make it through a day. Um, It's all tied around this idea of pursuing your passion. Verna Kelly, hey man. uh, man, lots of people are tuning in now. You guys are tuning in. I, hey, they're, they're coming in faster than I can read them and respond to them. Not to mention, I don't have on my old man glasses, right? So, <laughs> type bigger. <laughs> oh, man, this is fun. But anyway, I got a feeling that uh, that's one of the things that I think is going to come out positively on the other side of this coronavirus shutdown, scare economy disruption is the explosion we're going to see around distance learning. We're also gonna see, I predict, a radical transformation in the medical industry. For the longest, when you think about the way we traditionally do medicine, in the future, we're gonna look back at and think we were freaking crazy. Wait a minute, you mean to tell me that if you were at home and you got sick or your child got sick, you put them in a car and you took them to one centralized place where all the other sick people got together to, to, so you can see the doc- that makes no sense, right? Uh, think about that. If you're a healthy, well person, the last place you would want to go and walk away and still be healthy is probably a germ concentrated thing we call a hospital, right? Well, I think we're being forced. They say that mother's the uh, necessity is the mother of great invention, right? So this massive challenge we have right now, mostly centered around increasing our medical capacity, testing capacity, all that stuff. But what's coming out of it is more in alignment with what I'm talking about now. This whole idea that, you know, for the technology is such that you can now get a get down the path of diagnosis from home. Right. And not just Wikipedia and I'm not talking about Google symptoms, although you can do that as well. But now you can, when something's not right, you can, you can start to research what, what's wrong. You can fill out forms that can be, that can be AI behind that. So it, it takes you through a decision tree. It can put you, it can, it can tell based upon the preponderance of your symptoms, kind of what ballpark you're probably in and what might be wrong. And then you can click a button and connects with a healthcare professional, telemedicine, right? And then they can either ask you more questions, be more specific. And then you can then be directed to some type of physical place. And it's going to probably be some version of what we see the beginnings of now, which is drive up medicine or drive through medicine. Or can you imagine you driving up to a place where they walk out and meet you at a car and take your vitals there? And we're just going to we're, we're we're at the verge of transforming very significant elements of our society. Now, I warn you guys that don't know me. Yes, I am an optimist, and I've taught myself to be a bright side facing. I've taught myself to build the habits of optimism. Optimism is not an innate thing. I I did a podcast on that as well. I did a podcast on almost everything I think to be of value, and optimism is one. And it's not, most people think you're born that way. You're born an optimism or you're born a pessimist, and I argue the opposite. Optimism is just a skill. It's no different than making pancakes or shooting a basketball. Anybody can can learn how to shoot free throws better than they do currently. Anybody can learn how to cook better. You just have to get instruction and learn and build the habits and exercise and practice. Same with optimism, but there's some very powerful ways, reasons why I encourage you to explore. You know what, I'm gonna just ramble right now because I can tell right now I'm in the mood and the music's feeling good and I have nothing else to do because I can't go out go anywhere, can't go to my normal restaurants, my wine bar, right? I can't go to the places I normally go, so you're stuck with me until you get tired of me. I won't, I won't, I'm not gonna, I don't know, this is fine. But here's the thing, if you do any research on the results of optimism, you will probably be motivated to try to become more optimistic. Optimistic. If you look at the difference between your bio, the optimistic person's biochemistry, their immune system, their ability to be adaptive, their social status, 
their ability to be flexible in, a ch- in change, their ability to deal with change, their likability, their influence, their personal magnetism, their self-defined and objectively defined level of happiness. All of these things, if you research optimism, they go, I wouldn't bring it up if it did if all, I wouldn't give you that laundry list of things if it didn't if it wasn't so somehow associated with optimism. Now, I say all that to say this. Um, optimism is a skill. Optimism is a skill. To reflexively, without thinking about it, automatically see the good first, that's a skill. That's a learned skill. I think there's even a book called Learn Optimism. It's one of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books that I've read, right? But it's a very powerful idea. It's a very powerful idea. It's an empowering idea because right now, if you tend to not have that habit and you've learned the other habit, the one that make people call you pessimistic or to make yourself self-described as being pessimistic, it might not have anything to do with what, how you were born or what's in your DNA or any of that. It's probably more a um, expression of the habits you've learned and the way you've learned to respond to stimulus in your environment that we that are tend to be what we call negative, which helps you self-describe as being pessimistic. You can change that. You can rewrite that code. You can reboot that. That was the nature. That was the subject of my today's podcast. I guess it's going to be a shameless promotion today for my podcast. But here's the funny thing about my podcast. Most of my podcasts, I talk about a handful of things, but in a ton of different ways, right? Because I believe there to be a handful of things that disproportionately um, empower us to do extraordinary things with our potential in our life, regardless of who you are, where you are, and all that cool stuff. And I talk about it over and over and over and over and over um, quite often because in the effort of talking about it, because I do it unstifted, my brain makes new connections. So I, I learn just as much as the people that used to come to my seminars or workshops or things like that. I used to go do a workshop, and after the workshop, man, I, it was like I took a workshop. I was like, what the heck, man? Because things would come out and be like, wow, I never thought about that in that way before. There's something about the reward that you get from the honest um, um, intention of being helpful to others. When you have this honest intention of being helpful to others, I think the universe conspires to be be helpful back to you in the moment, actually. And it's not like a, you know, wait for it to come back. I think it happens in the moment. But these are just things I believe. You don't have to believe what I believe because I, you know, it's just my two cents. Hey, Travis, I haven't talked to you in forever. Sean, power of positive, and Sean, you're right, it is the power of positive thinking. But here's the thing about the power of positive thinking. It is probably the most, um, two things, underrated um, idea that there is, but it's probably the most oversimplified idea in that world of things we can do to positively influence our life. People say, oh, just think positive like it's an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to do. In fact, it's way more complicated than most people realize because we are habitual. We are taught the habits that don't support positive thinking. We're actually taught to think a little ne- negatively. But we do it, we're, we're taught it in such a way that we can be negative and think we're positive, which because of that, we don't know that we have this this negative defect that we might want to adjust because we don't even know that we have it. We think we're positive. Let me give an example. Kids are running through the house and you love the kids and you don't want them to get hurt. So you give them a positive, you give them some positive suggestion, right? It's an order, but you give them a positive suggestion. You say, hey, um, they run through the house and they run out the door and you, and you know, you, you say, hey, don't run through the house and don't slam the door because you're giving them positive feedback, right? No, that's not the positive feedback. You gave them the negative feedback because the positive feedback to that exact same scenario would be, hey, walk through the house, close the door quietly. You you know, many are gonna say, well, it's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. One, one is, 
One is what you don't want. You don't want them to run negative through your house and you don't want them to slam the door. The other is positive. Walk through the house, close the door quietly. They're not the same thing. And you know why they're not the same thing? Because when you back up from that, what emotions do you feel when you picture them running through the house or what might happen of them running through the house and you picture those things emotionally, you have a different emotional response than what could happen than when you picture them walking through the house and closing the door quietly. Although the door being closed quietly might physically seem like it ended up with the same thing, it is coming from two completely different worlds. That was my little two cents and my little tangent of how difficult it is or can be to be to, for, for positive, to be a positive thinker. It's not, in it, it's not as natural as people think. It's sort of like, um, like I was talking about earlier about building the habit of optimism. You have to build the habit of being a positive thinker as well. These are habits, guys. These are not how you're born or not in your DNA. It's not, you know, our language is prone to lean negatively. If, if Once you realize that, and once you, it's funny because once you build a habit, and you go around other people and you listen to the language they use, you realize how negative most people are. Even good, great people with great hearts, the language they use is negative. They ask themselves negative questions all the time. You know, they're in a bad relationship or they realize they're in a bad relationship and they ask themselves the question, they ask themselves the universe and the question, why does this always happen to me? But how often, how, often, how common is that? How many times have you heard a friend Related to something, related to their job or a relationship or something bad. How many times have you heard somebody say, why does this always happen to me? Okay, compare that to the, to, compare that to the, how, to how many times have you heard your friends or family or people or yourself say, wow, how can I meet tremendous people? <laughs> that is probably so rare, you probably never heard it. But you've heard the negative version of that. You've, it's like, it's like there's a coin, right? It's like there's a coin that physically might, that kind of seems to be the same thing. Negative on one side, but, but, but positive on others. It's still the same coin, so say it's a nickel. It's still five cents, right? But, but the five cents comes from different places, right? The, the negative part of this is so common, we, we don't even realize when we're saying it, right? We don't even realize it. And quite it's so uncommon to do the positive thing. You know something I did? I'm still rambling, and you know, if you're still with me, God bless you, because this is, maybe you're bored. But um, here's the thing. Here's an exercise I, I challenge you to do in your own spare time. Hell, you just gave me a thing. You just gave me a thing, an idea. An idea is a thing, thoughts are things, right? So I'm going to give you some games you can play with yourself during this corona lock-in, that if you do them, they might be transformative or they might be enlightening. And if they're enlightening, they might end up being transformative, right? So this is in the boat of how programmed we are with a negative viewpoint or the negative connotation of who we are and where things are. And and we're submerged in a negative world of our own design and our own language more than we might want to admit. What I used to have people do, I used to have people do this in person. So you're going to honor system, you're going to have to do it for yourself. All you need is a stopwatch. Um, It's it's super eye-opening. But what I tell people to do is set a stopwatch for three minutes. For three minutes. And all I want you to do, and it's, keep in mind, this is just an exercise, so don't worry about it, right? But for three minutes, all you're going to do is brag about yourself. Now, I know it's not good to brag and all boast and all that stuff, but it's just you and you. Don't worry about it. This is going to be to prove a point to you about you and your viewpoint of you. Click a recorder, click a, re- click a timer, and I want you to try to brag about yourself for three minutes. Most of you are not going to even make it a minute. Most of you are not going to even make it 30 seconds before you struggle with thinking of things to say. Now... I'm not going to tell you to do this, but you're going to innately know it's true. Or you can try it a little bit just to take it out. If I were to tell you to take the same three minutes and complain about your life, complain about things, people could do that for five minutes. People could do that for an hour straight nonstop. Now, here's the thing. 
You are living, breathing. You know where you've come. You've known the path you've taken. Believe me, every living human being right now has hours and hours and hours of things that they should be able to brag about. Every, believe me, the, the reason why people struggle with that is because they are, they are so focused on the negative and so habitually looking at the negative. And by negative, I don't mean you have a negative heart or I don't mean you, it's just habit. Most of what I'm talking about is just habits. And if you don't believe me, try it. I devil dare you with the cherry on top. Most people can't brag on themselves for 30 seconds. I couldn't in the beginning. It felt so, and if you can, it's going to feel so odd. You're going to want to do this when nobody is around because you bragging yourself out loud. It's going to feel so like universally like wrong, like something's just wrong with that, right? But here's the thing, guys. Very closely associated with your ability to appreciate these awesome and amazing things that you have done that empower you and make you feel so great that you want to do what people might call bragging. Now, in this case, I'm going to say it's okay to brag because you're just bragging to yourself. I'm not saying brag to others about you. I'm just saying brag to yourself. But if, you can, if you've been living for longer than 20 years and you haven't found enough unbelievable great things about you that you've done that you can brag about for three minutes, that little insight in self might change your life forever. Because that tells you that that's not true. That's not an objective reality. That's just the you and the result of your habits. Because believe me, you, you have things that you can brag about. Even if your life has been a train wreck, a train wreck and a shit show, pardon me, if you can have humor about it and laugh about the fact that it's been a train wreck, that's powerful in itself, right? I just took five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten seconds to hypothetically brag about a train wreck version of a made-up life. That's my point. My point is, but when you put on a task, when you put on a spot of bragging about yourself, that's going to be, a light's going to probably go on for many of you. Of, oh my gosh, I've been looking at myself so negatively for so long, I have to struggle to think of different things. Okay, that's one thing. What's another thing I can, I'm going to just bounce around from thing to thing to thing to thing. I talked about optimism being a skill set. Same with leadership. I come from the school of thought that believes that leaders are made, not born. Um, Marines don't believe in that whole born leader thing. We believe that some people might be born with some characteristics that if applied in the right way might make them really good leaders. But to be an effective leader long term, you have to be taught that. You have to, you have to be taught that. You have to be taught that either formally or informally. But there are many aspects to effective leadership that are counterintuitive, which means you can't just sit down and logically think about it and do it and be it and experience it. You got to be taught it. So we, I come from the school of thought that leadership is, a, is taught, not you're not born that way, which is great, right? Which means that anybody can become a better leader than they are today. Mr. Locke here. Hey, man, it's been forever. Hey, uh, Roseanne. Nice. Thanks for tuning in to my random broadcast on the coronavirus lockdown. <laughs> I am stuck here in the bad cave. For the, those of you that, well, uh, I, I have no idea who's tuning into this and if you're new to me and you don't really know me, there are other people that can tell you who I really am. They can tell you that I am actually Batman. They know this. <laughs> so yes, I'm in the back cave, just kind of chilling. Hey, Mara, thanks for tuning in. Hope you are safe and being well. And I hope that everybody that's tuning in is doing all of their social distancing and hand washing and just being aware being more and more and more aware um, of this, of our challenge to get through this, this, uh, this, this virus challenge that we have right now. Um, and it's probably going to get worse before it gets better, but, you know, it, believe me, it could be a, a million times worse. The fact that we can mobilize as a nation and shut down, basically, is so, we, it, it's so unbelievable, we, I can't even get my mind around how powerful that is for us to even be able to attempt to do that. Hey, Sherry. Wow, haven't seen you or spoken to you in long, 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 long time. Long, 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 long time. 
a long, long time. Rod for Todd, for, I guess you're shut down in, I'm guessing, Panama. Look at this guy. Look at how powerful this is right now. I'm sitting here in the Batcave on coronavirus lockdown. I got people tuned in from Las Vegas, from Panama, from Seattle, from, let me know where you're tuning in from. Maryland, for sure. Um, um, Sherry, where are you tuning in from? Carmen, where are you tuning in from? You travel a lot. I think you might be in Seattle, but you could have got locked down in some other place. I don't know. Um, North Carolina in the house, in the house. So this, my point, this is how powerful this is. So we look at, we, you know, back to this whole thing about how, how we're trained to look at the negative, how we always see the dark side, blah, 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 blah. But can you imagine if, of us being in lockdown 15 years ago without the internet, without cell phones? First of all, we probably wouldn't as individual citizens gotten the information out yet. We still wouldn't even know what's going on. Because if, if it would have happened back when I was a small boy, before cable TV, when there were only three television stations, if that virus had broken out then, humanity might have gotten wiped out, right? But now, not only can we respond to it, can we immediately start to educate ourselves, start to make sense of what's going on, we can be locked in. I'm locked down in the back cave all by my lonesome, and here I am talking to a bunch of people all over the place. So I'm not going to get depressed. I'm not going to feel the isolation that other generations might have felt because I can tune in with other We should be so, 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 so grateful that this is happening at this moment in time, you know, where we can use these things to our advantage. Um, hey, Danielle. Oh, that's a doctor in the house. Hopefully you're being safe. All you people in the medical industry, especially you doctors and nurses and practitioners, man, now everybody is realizing how critical you are in our society, where you are right now going to be the difference, the difference between, between good and not so good, right? Wow. Hey, hey Lorraine. Um, I know you're, I see you staying busy. Um, and again, uh, another, you know, for as much as we like to bash social media, I'm looking at all these people tuning in and some of these people I haven't spoken to, like in a real conversation in a long time. But I kind of know what everybody's up to, right? I watch you. Like Kimberly, I know you staying on it. I know you're still being active. How do I know that? Because I'm plugging into social media. I tune in and say, oh, look at Kimberly doing her thing. That's what, that's cool, right? So this whole social media thing. Is, is I think if this virus is going to remind us of how small this world actually is. Just thought of another tangent I can go on. So one of the reasons why I tell people that they should be op- this is I, I did a, a seminar once on um, actually it was on optimism I think it was. But anyway, one of the reasons why I when I try to build my case to why everybody should be optimistic are because of technology and the connection we have and because of this whole idea of how small the world is. And by that I mean in terms of mathematical connections. How many of you out there have heard of the game called The Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? Which means that there's this game that people play where you try to think of a star that knows that that has been in a movie with Kevin Bacon. And right, supposedly every movie star on the planet has been within six people away from Kevin Bacon. But the math actually says that Every human being on the planet, this is going to blow some people away that have never heard this, but this is math. Every, and this might help explain the virus, by the way. Every human being, every individual human being on the planet is connected to every other human being on the planet by six people or less. Let, let that sink in for a while. But that explains how a virus can go from Wuhan, China to Vegas, right? All around the world, to all, to 100 countries so fast. The reason why that is, and, and, and it's passed person to person. But, but every, this math might help you get your mind around why that's so possible. Because every human being is separated from every other human being by six people or less. And here's the non-intuitive thing about the math behind social networks. I read about this in a book called Linked, well before LinkedIn, years before that LinkedIn even existed as a, as a platform, 
when I was involved with some technology and some people that were trying to understand the science behind social networks long before what we now recognize as being social networks. Um, when I say social networks, I'm talking about the connection of humans. I'm not talking about Facebook. But the math says that every human being is separated by every other human being by um, six people or less. Let me give an example. You right now are connected to the President of the United States through me, right? And here's the connection. You to me, me to my brother. My brother used to work for a senator, a senator worked for the president. That's four or five, right? But that's what everybody on the planet, every star you can name, every uh, famous person, every, the fact that everybody's only connected by six people or less, you should think about that. Now here's why I think that should feed to the case for you being optimistic. Say there is something you really want to be or do, and the difference between you see or doing it, hey Candace, the, or you see or doing it, is access, knowledge, resources, understanding. Let's just say there's a person on this, okay, let me ask you a question. You know there's this thing you want to be do, or there's thing you want to become, or you know there's this thing you would love to accomplish in your life. Do you believe that there are people in this world that if they knew that was your goal, and they really wanted to help you, they could shorten your journey to making that happen, if not make it happen with the snap of their fingers. Could they not make, help you make that happen like instantly because of the people they know or what they know or the access they have or the resources they have, et cetera, et cetera. Of course they can. Now let's go back to what I said about the six degrees of separation and why you should be opt- learn to be optimistic. Well, if you're only separated from every other human on the planet by six people or less, that means that there are, you're less than six people away from somebody that can make that dream come true. Think about that. Every day you wake up, there are six people away. Now, let's think about, well, if that's true, Earl, then why don't I meet them? Well, one of the reasons might be because you probably aren't telling the people this thing. It's probably in your head and people around you don't know that's what you're trying to do or that's where you're trying to go. So you probably pass these people all the time and, and, and not even mention it. Or you don't mention it in such a way that they remember it. And then when they remember what your life's mission is, the next day in the Starbucks, when that person is sitting next to somebody and that person tells what they do, and they say, oh my gosh, my friend's life mission is to do that thing that your friends do. And knows how the dots get connected. Man, see, that's why, you know, ah, if that doesn't fire you up, you just don't understand the math. You're not thinking about it, right? So the, by the very mechanism that has the whole world paralyzed right now with fear, uncertainty, and doubt, you should wake up and have that same math serve that engine that makes you fired up and optimistic because you are less than six people away from somebody that can help you do this thing you want to do in ways that you can't even imagine. And that's just a mathematical fact. And as this virus just demonstrated, it doesn't really matter if that person, if you are in Maryland and that person that can help you is in Australia. Because just like my good friend um, is on right now from Panama, we're only connected by a click. A click on your device, right? And the world is gonna continue to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Here's a thing that you might not understand about the math that's counterintuitive. The more people you put on the planet, the less connections you are apart from everybody else. Mind blown, right? It seems like it would be the more people in the bucket, the more connections you might be removed from somebody. No, the way it works is the less connections you are from everybody else, the more people you add. And we know we're more than more people to the bucket every minute of every day. Wow, I'm going on some pretty cool tangents here today. So guys, this was definitely an unscheduled kind of live. I just thought I'd go live because I'm sitting here. Um, I'm about to get my my gym on right there. My home gym, my my work, my water bottle and my rolly wheel and my heavy ball <laughs> and my empty floor. 
I'm going to probably do some uh, shadow boxing and some ab work. I think I'm going to do some ab work. See if I can get them, get, get that six pack, get them dogs ready to run free, man, when I, when everything opens back is up. Because you know what's coming after this virus thing? Summer. <laughs> and it gets harder and harder and harder and harder and harder, man, to convince them that six pack to show up again, again, a year after year, right? It gets harder, man. They, they, they're like, they're like, nah, nah, I'm not feeling you, man. I'm not, I'm not trying to run with you this year. And you're like, what? Come on, man. We've been running forever. They're like, nah, not this year. They're like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta work for it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta make me want to come this year. I'm like, but I'm, I'm working for it every year. They're like, nah, dude. That's me having a conversation with my six pack, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> well, potential suspect, right? Because it's not an automatic thing. <laughs> well, guys, welcome. Welcome to the Bat Cave. Thanks for uh, keeping me company here for however long this has been. Um, Joe, I know you are. So Joe was inspired by these random videos I did. And he did something that not even I did. And I was, you know, I was... Trying, I was talking about how um, consistent I am with being consistent to my workout and my blah, you know, all this. And, and Joe said I nagged him to the point where it pissed him off and he just got started. And Joe did, uh, I don't know what the final total was, but he did more than 100 days in a row without missing a workout. I've never even, I've never even thought about trying to do that. And he did over a hundred days in a row without missing. To, to this day, I think that's even more incredible than me being consistent over the course of a year, year after year after year. I've never done a hundred days in a row of working out. Never done that. Joe's done that. I don't know what the final, uh, Joe, how many days did you get before you finally took a break in that action? But I know it was more than a hundred. Um, 115. Unfreaking believable. So let that be an inspiration to some of you guys of what's possible when you get pissed off and annoyed. <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh, Kimberly says she's got a great program for that. I know Kimberly is a an ambassador for the whole uh, Beach Body program. That awesome work at home stuff. Your business might, your, your, your tools and resources might just really explode over the next couple of months because people are stuck at home and some people are going to, are hopefully going to get motivated and try to use this as a time to, to do something physical, right? So, um, yeah. Joe said I drove him to do it. No, man, I didn't drive you to do it. You did it. You did all the stuff yourself, man. You know, this, I, I, I can be annoying, right? I, I, I will say this. I am fairly consistent with the things that I am fairly consistent. Once I consider, once I check the box as something being important, I try to build the habits in such a way that I can make them stay consistent. And most people think I like working out because I'm so consistent about it, and I actually don't. I probably like working out less than most people that might even be watching this. I just do it anyway. I don't have to like it. Somebody told me that in one of the branches of the military, as in maybe the Navy or the Marines. Remember somebody constantly saying, you don't have to like it, you just have to do it. <laughs> and there's some profound truth in that. And you just have to do it consistently. Hey, Ben Devlin, thanks for tuning in to my random broadcast from the back cave. I got my music. I'm actually in a pretty good mood. Yeah, maybe I better get off this broadcast now while I'm feeling pretty motivated and go get some reps and so get some ab works in. Do some flutter kicks, some knee ups, some V ups, some planks, some wheels, some twists. See, I'm already getting there now. I'm already visualizing what I'm gonna do so I can get there. All right, guys. Thanks everybody for indulging my um, random tangents. I invite everybody. I have a podcast that I've been doing, which is like this, but way shorter. They're like 10 minutes, five minutes, usually like 10 minutes or less on some of the things that I find to be the most useful in terms of perspective, food for thought, different ways to look at things that I believe to be um, very 
full of potential and the power they might bring into your world. So I invite you to tune into the podcast. Um, podcast is titled Symbol Athletica. Why Symbol Athletica? Um, because I believe the symbol, part of that is I believe we are the greatest living symbol of our of the summation of our own beliefs. We symbolize, we are living symbols of the things that we believe. And Athletica um, is this idea that we believe, the people that tune in, we believe that most worthy things come on the other side of challenge. So like athletics, right? Challenge or like sport. So Athletica is the, the mindset that we, the world, the universal mindset that we know must exist in our pursuit of fill in the blank happiness, right? So Symbol Athletica is the combination of these two ideas. But I do have a podcast where I talk about pretty cool stuff. I invite you to go find it and tune in. Um, starting with today's, because today I talk about using the coronavirus lockdown to reboot F5. F5 is a reboot on a keyboard, on a computer keyboard. I call it human F5. You know, maybe I try to inspire you to reboot elements of your life or your lifestyle. Just, just, just shut it down and cut it back on and start with a from a different place where programs aren't frozen and stuck. Guys, thank you. I appreciate you all. Um, look for the bright side of this very scary time. And if anybody's not scared of this time, that means they're just not understanding what's going on. Fear is okay. Um, but look for the bright side of it. And you, you might be amazed at what you might stumble across something that, that survives this and becomes a persistent part of your life that completely changes the destination of your life or more poetically said it might change your destiny (laughs) all right guys you guys take care thanks for tuning in